Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so we'll see. All right, so. Hats oh, shit. Oh. The, 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 the hat's going backwards. Oh, oh shit. The hat's oh. going backwards. Yes. Oh. He about to read. Don't, don't, have, don't have me put on the black V-neck because it's, it's going to be roasting. But, okay. So, <laughs> reference. I know that he got that out. Reference. Reference. Yeah. I told him about a reference, though, so I reference. Here's the deal. I live in Massachusetts, and anyone who knows anything about Massachusetts, there's a lot of white people. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, that, that tickled me. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> because the truth is funny sometimes, goddammit. Yes, yes, the truth yeah. is white. Exactly. <laughs> um, I, I think that as a book, Black gay person living around a bunch of white people in a place where gay is normal. Like, I think what a lot of people around America don't understand about Massachusetts is here gay is normal. So, you know, we don't, our gay nightlife is actually kind of shitty because when people meet, get married, and move to the suburbs, gay is normal here. Mm. So being a black gay person here, you kind of get both sides of that coin. So when I, when I was in the dating pool, I found two types of attitudes towards me. Um, in Massachusetts, most people are like, well, you know, we're the intellectuals of America. So as the intellectual of America, they rightly know to keep their mouth shut about racist shit. They don't walk around saying, oh, well, I'm not going to do you because you're black, or, um, you know, I'm not into black guys, or, um, you know, you're a nigger. They, they feel like it's beneath them to say that, to say it. <laughs> to say when it. it comes down to their actions, on the other hand, you come across two types. You come across, and, the, and these are just most common, you come across the ones where you are a fetish. You're a black guy, you obviously got a big dick, we know what it's all about, black men are good in bed, everybody wants to fuck a black guy. But that's all you're good for, for them, is mm-hmm. fuck it. They don't want to date you, they don't want to help you succeed, they don't want any of that, they just want to fuck. And if all you're about is getting laid, like if you're, if you're just that, hey, have at it, have a great time, best not be a bottom. <laughs> if, you, if, you think, if you think you're going to be a bottom in Massachusetts, even as a white bottom, you're going to have a hard time. And if you think you're going to do it as a black bottom, you're going to ha- have an even harder time. Wow. Uh, because they're, they don't see you that way. They, when they look at you, they're like, their racism is based on stereotypes, whether it's positive or negative. Mm-hmm. No one, when, when they say, well, black men are good in bed, no one ever goes, not at all. Because I mean, it's still a stereotype, but it's one that people like to accept. Fine. Right. Other types you come across are the types that are like, oh, I'm not interested, when really they're saying no fats, no femmes, no blacks, no Asians, no whatever. Right. Uh, and that's what you come across in terms of the racism here. It's a lot of underhanded racism like you don't see you it's not readily apparent unless you know what to look for right but that being said i have never had a white gay person call me a nigger not once i have never had a white gay person not let me into the bar not once when it comes down to black folks, and y'all know me from Facebook, I, nobody's safe. I'm gonna talk about black people, white people, Asian people, I don't give a shit. Everybody is up for it. But um, when it comes down to the black folks, I've been called a faggot by more black people than I've been called a nigger by white gays. Uh, I've heard black people use gay as a negative. Right. Or as a means of emasculating someone. Um, more than I have heard white gays say black as a negative or black as a dehumanizing thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I see both sides of that coin. The racism is definitely there. Um, I, you know, I, I, do, I do web programming, so I was working on an app that starts with an S that people like to 
fuck on. Um, and having that kind of access, you get to see things where the overwhelming majority was, I'm just not into black guys. That's, you know, that's what I'm just, that's just my preference. They hide their bigotry behind preference. That's just mm-hmm. my preference. Um, and I've gotten into arguments with people about that preference word before where I tell them, look, <laughs> I prefer pizza. But that does not mean I am not going to eat a burger. Doesn't mean I'm not going to eat some shrimp. Doesn't mean I'm not going to eat other food. It means that if you put other food in front of me with a pizza, nine times out of ten I might choose the pizza. But hey, if that pizza's not around, I'm going to choose anything else. I might get sick of pizza for a damn week. Whatever. That's a preference. You know, if it was like, hey, I prefer, I prefer my men to be, you know, six foot four and 250 pounds. Prefer. It doesn't mean you're shutting out everything. <laughs> like, once you start shutting everything out, well, I don't do black men. That's my preference. That's racism. Right. At the same time, I'm not going to beg you to fuck me. So, mm-hmm. so I don't know. I, I see it, but I don't see it. I'm glad that he said something. I don't agree that it's more. I right. see both. I would not say it's more, because, just for the simple fact that I've had more black people feel comfortable saying, oh, you a fag? Oh, you're gay? Or to hear them go, oh, that's gay. Oh, that's some homo shit. Mm-hmm. That's some boy shit. Yeah, I hear that all the time. Like, you know, men feel like they need to say no homo. Right. Or they say something that's really homo. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no homo, but you look good in those pants. Well, right. I think you can say you look good in those pants, you know? Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I, 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 for me, I guess it kind of, I find it hard to believe that he says that he he's experienced more, more racism right in the gay community. But then again, we've kind of seen that happen recently with that whole Bear Weekend fiasco that was all over Facebook. Right, right. Uh uh-huh. Yeah, that was a whole debacle there, um, and it was basically there. There was a lot of racist undertones behind that too, like because right. you you know. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure where it started. Was it was it with the the sister people? The, what do you call those? The, the guys with the nun. Oh, yeah, the, the sisters of perpetual indulgence. Yeah, I don't know if it started with them or if it was some racist thing that happened. But that dude was just oh, just oh my god, the worst example of a racist homophobe. And he was a bear. He right. was a gay bear. Right. right. He was just the worst example. So it's it, it's definitely there. Definitely there. Definitely there. I agree with you. I don't think it's. Well, actually, I could. I could what is that? Did you see that question? That was my phone. Oh. I don't know. That's probably, that's probably somebody messaging me. I ain't worried about it. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. No, but um, yeah. To, to see more race, more homo. I, I, I think I would say it's more homophobia in the black community than there is racism in the home in the homosexual community. Mm-hmm. Who, who is that calling me? Mm-hmm. Okay, but. Do you think okay? Do you think it's? <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Like, do you think it's because he's more of a star than us? Because we're talking about ourselves and being normal, but he's more of a high level. Well, I'm gonna say high level, but he's seen more and more of a celebrity than what we do have to deal with. Do you think that play into what he's saying? You, do you think that do we do we think that because he's a celebrity and he's in, and he's in that? Right. That spotlight. That spotlight. Mm-hmm. Mm, no. I yeah, I would say his spotlight gives him a platform to say it. Right? Yeah, his platform to say it, yeah. Uh, but he's been with his man for God knows how long. And I mean, granted, we don't know what kind of relationship they have. But I mean, he's been with his man for a while, and his man is white. And, I, and, and the reality is, my man is white. But at the same time, I wasn't going to be with a white dude who just saw a, a stereotype. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I was going to find, like, if I was going to be with a white dude, he was going to have to understand my struggle. Because it's like, as a gay man, we can, we can connect. But as a white man and a black man, we, you know, that kind of connection isn't going to be there. It just isn't. Right. Uh, but the funny part about him is that he understands the struggle. He sees the struggle. He gets more upset than I do when people give us looks and stuff like that. Like he gets more upset than like I've gotten used to it. Right. 
upset than I do because he's like, it's not right. 